Hello there and welcome to another A Posteriori Gearsbot tutorial. Welcome back to Sumo Wrestling in the Gearsbot environment. So a few things you might have noticed when trying to hard code uh, an automated path of knocking off the four fixed dummies, it's not easy. And you need to actually add quite a bit of automation just to create this perfect motion going forward, going back, rotating 90 degrees in the center of the arena. Um, moving forward again, moving back, uh, and repeating that. It's actually a lot easier to automate a more chaotic, random, uh, messy algorithm that eventually would knock all of the robots off, something more like a Roomba robot that just avoids the edges and goes along pushing uh, in front of it, doesn't even know what's in front of it and what's not. But uh, j let's just work on this. Just there, there is a place for such automation in the real world uh, in the cases of things like assembly lines where robots are expected to repeat the exact same mo motion over and over again, whether it's a rotation of a belt or uh, a robot arm doing a particular uh, grab or push or uh, even a simple arm uh, just uh, moving back and forth. Uh, just you know, uh, pushing things off a belt, etc., and, and doing some repeatable motion uh, over and over and over again. And if we wanted to do that, we would need to really look at uh, how far each motor has rotated and make sure those are in lockstep. Use the gyro in order to make sure that we haven't uh, uh, deviated from our path, and also use the gyro in order to uh, execute uh, an exact uh, rotation, uh, 90 degrees. So there is a, a way to try to uh, uh, do this, and maybe I'll show you a few uh, of these examples now. In another uh, tutorial, I will have shown you how to use the gyro, for instance, to go in a straight line. In this particular case, uh, because it's not really sumo wrestling, we're just doing automation, I will just leave a link in the comments section of the video, and you can follow that link to get the code uh, that you can upload uh, using load blocks from your computer into this environment and you can uh, look inside that code and try to see what's being done in order to execute that perfect motion. For now I'll just load that file and execute the program and you can see how it's being done. So we can see with this kind of program that relies heavily on, on the gyro sensor, we have a better chance of completing the task using a hard-coded set of motions. Go straight, go back, turn to the right, go straight, go back, turn to the right. Um, uh, but I don't necessarily recommend this as your sumo wrestler robot, obviously. Uh, that was just to show you that with automation and uh, a bit of sensing, uh, you, sh you should still be able to complete uh, these types of tasks. So what's next? Let's look at our next world in the Sumo Challenges. We have the Random Dummies world. And uh, now we don't know um, uh, where the dummies are placed. There's six of them, uh, but we don't know necessarily where they are uh, each time. Uh, so for this, we can use two types of approaches. One is just random walker algorithm. You basically drive to the edge of the arena. When you see red, turn around, drive somewhere else, and your turns should be as randomized as possible. And eventually, you might clear uh, all of your uh, dummies off the table. Now, we can trust that and see if it beats the more sane algorithm. The sane algorithm would be use uh, our ultrasonic sensor to detect if there's a dummy in front of us. And if there is, knock it off the table, avoid red. Uh, when you don't see a dummy in front of you and you don't see red, then you should be turning around in a circle until you see something in front of you. And if we wanted to gamify the system, we might be able to say that if there isn't a dummy or anything in front of our ultrasonic sensor, for a particular distance after we do 360 degree rotation, then we know that all of the dummies have been knocked off. So if you haven't used the ultrasonic sensor before for anything, the ultrasonic sensor on this particular robot is uh, in port two. And when we are not facing anything, it shows us 255 centimeters. 
So let's make our robot start turning around, and as the ultrasonic sensor starts to see something, uh, uh, we'll get some new readings in our distance sensor. Yeah, we'll create a brand new function for this. And we'll just start moving our tank in a circle about the uh, center of the wheels. Okay, so we can see when there's a, a dummy in front of us, our distance goes down from 255 to some other distance. And uh, roughly speaking, it's the distance in front of us. We can measure you know, what's this distance roughly. Uh, Okay, so we're getting distances in centimeters, uh, and when we don't see anything, we get um, a 255. Right, if we look at the, uh, the length of the table, it's less than 255, so we know that if we're seeing something that's 255 away, um, we, we, it's definitely a dummy. And if we don't see something 255 away, then there's nothing there. It's not like we need to move a little bit forward to see it. Um, in this particular arena, where the diameter of the arena itself is, is shorter than 255 centimeters, which is the limit of our ultrasonic sensor. Okay, so uh, we should be able to now uh, use the ultrasonic sensor to create that algorithm. And this part I'll let you try to do. So the algorithm is quite simple. Uh, we can assume not to worry about the red at this point. Basically, uh, when, whenever your ultrasonic sensor sees anything less than 255 centimeters, uh, move forward. And whenever it doesn't see that, turn around. Okay, and I'll let you try that and I'll come back and show you what that looks like.